by now you've probably built and configured your drone. And you've probably also flown it. And if you've flown it, you've probably crashed it. Now crashing is an integral part of drone racing. And a wise man once said to me that if you're not crashing, you're not learning. Now I'm not 100% sure that that's true, but crashing is an integral part. And so you need to know how to fix your drone when it goes wrong. Now, because you built it in the first place, you've probably got a pretty good idea of how it goes together. In this video, I aim to explain a bit about the mechanics of how a drone flies, and armed with that and the uh, knowledge of how the drone is constructed, you should be able to fix things when it goes wrong. So the concepts discussed in this video apply equally to the Tyrant S, the 3S uh, drone, and also to the Micro Drone. In the Engineers competition, we use a type of multi-rated drone called a quadcopter, and it gets its name from the fact that it's got four propellers. Now, two of those propellers go clockwise, and two go counterclockwise. But why? If we imagine for a minute that all of the propellers are turning clockwise, like this. So this is the uh, same direction of rotation for all of them then they achieve their primary purpose, which is to, to give us lift. So the propellers would give thrust and the quadcopter would raise up. But we've got another problem, which is torque. Now, all of the motors have got torque in a clockwise direction, which will cause the, uh, the body of the drone to try and spin and, and catch up with that torque and spin wildly out of control. So the way that we get around that is we have two motors that turn in a clockwise direction and two in a counterclockwise direction. So those are on opposite corners of the drain. So we have uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, on the opposite corner, another counterclockwise, and over here, a clockwise. So the clockwise are opposite each other diagonally, and the counterclockwise are opposite each other diagonally. So now we've got uh, two motors providing torque in a clockwise direction and two in a counterclockwise direction, which cancels, uh, cancels each other out and it means that the drone is then stable. It also gives us a really interesting side effect, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. So we've solved the torque problem by having two clockwise and two counterclockwise motors, uh, but that's now given us a different problem because assuming all of the propellers are identical, the clockwise motors are providing lift, so they're trying to push the drone upwards, and the counterclockwise uh, propellers are providing negative lift. So uh, the two are cancelling each other out and the drone isn't going to go anywhere. Now, the way we get around that is by having two different types of propellers. You have a clockwise propeller and a counterclockwise propeller. Uh, now, you might see those uh, marked actually on the, on the propeller itself with either an R for a clockwise one, so right-hand rotation, or an L for a counterclockwise one, which is left-hand rotation. But what's the difference between them? So if we take, uh, these are two-bladed propellers, but the concept is exactly the same as the three-blade ones that you'll be using on your uh, drones, or four blades on, in the case of the, the micro drones. Um, and what we're interested in is what's called the leading edge. And so if we look at the propeller uh, side on, it has a, a higher edge and a lower edge. Uh, and so the higher edge is the leading edge, and the propeller will always turn towards it. So in the case of this propeller, the leading edge is here and here. So it needs to turn towards those, which means that this is a clockwise propeller. On this one, the leading edge is here and here, and so this one, if we turn towards the leading edges, is a counterclockwise propeller. And that means that by having uh, different propellers for clockwise and counterclockwise, they both provide lift, regardless of the, uh, the fact that they are turning in opposite directions to one another. We've got the basics, so now let's look at the four axes of movement, which are pitch, roll, yaw, and throttle. So throttle first, because that's probably the easiest one to explain. Um, basically by increasing the throttle, um, we make the drone go up more quickly, and by decreasing it, it starts to come down again. Um, and how that works is it just increases all four propellers uh, at the same rate. So the faster those propellers are spinning, the more lift we get. Uh, next we'll look at pitch. So pitch, we can pitch nose down, tilting forwards, or nose up, uh, tilting backwards. And what that does is as we pitch nose down, 
the drain will want to travel forwards. And if we pitch nose up, the drain will want to travel backwards. And the way we make it have those movements is by uh, increasing the speed of the two rear propellers. We'll pull the rear of the drone up and that will pitch nose down. And vice versa, if we increase the speed of the two front propellers, it will pull the front of the drone up and pitch nose up. Uh, then for roll, it's very similar. So we can roll left or we can roll right. Uh, and so to roll left, we need to increase the speed of the two left-hand propellers and that will bring the right of the drone up. So roll us to the left and vice versa. If we increase the speed of the two left-hand propellers, the drone will roll to the, uh, to the right. And the final axis of movement is the yaw, which is this rotation. And if you remember earlier on, I said there's an interesting side effect about having uh, the two clockwise and two counterclockwise motors. Now, the reason we have those, of course, is torque. It's to stop the drone spinning wildly out of control. But we can also use that to our advantage. Uh, so if we imagine here that we decrease the speed of the two counterclockwise motors and slightly increase the speed of the two clockwise motors, then the clockwise torque is greater than the counterclockwise, so the frame of the drone will start to spin clockwise, so it'll give us this movement. And if we were to do the opposite, so reduce the speed of the two clockwise motors and slightly increase the speed of the two counterclockwise motors, then the drone frame will start to rotate uh, slightly counterclockwise due to the torque. And so we can actually use that effect to our advantage and give us uh, extra axes of movement. So we've looked at how the motors and propellers influence the way in which the drone moves, but there's two other really important parts of the jigsaw, the transmitter and the flight controller, which is mounted on your drone. First, let's take a look at the transmitter, which is the device that the pilot uses uh, to control the drone. When you move the joysticks or change one of the switches, it sends a signal uh, to the receiver on the drone. Now the drone needs to work out how it needs to change the speed and power to each of the motors to make the drone move in the way that the pilot's requested. And this part's done by the flight controller. So the flight controller is essentially a little computer um, which takes data from a number of different sources. Uh, so that could be the user input from the transmitter and data from sensors that are mounted on the PCB. In the case of the Airgineers Micro and 3S drones, those sensors are a gyro and an accelerometer. So uh, the gyro detects the drone's rate of rotation and helps it decide which way it's facing. Um, so more accurately, it's the rate at which it's yawing. Uh, the accelerometer detects the angle of roll and of pitch. So because of this, it's really important that the flight controller is mounted the correct way because if you're 90 degrees off, clockwise or counterclockwise, the drone might think that it's pitching when in fact it's actually rolling and rolling when in fact it's actually pitching. Uh, and therefore it would send the wrong power signals uh, to the wrong motors to correct that movement. So when the pilot moves the sticks on the transmitter, the flight controller commands the motors to increase or decrease in speed. Now using data from the sensors and some clever maths called a PID algorithm, the flight controller works out exactly how much it needs to increase or decrease the speed of each motor to make the movement happen. And the sensors on the flight controller are also used to help the pilot when the drone is in angle mode because uh, using data from the accelerometer, the, uh, the uh, flight controller can prevent the drone from pitching or rolling too far. And is also used to self-level uh, when the pilot releases the sticks uh, on the transmitter. So to summarize, uh, here's a few handy tips for things that you can check to make sure that everything's working correctly. First, you check the flight controller is correctly oriented, and so the easiest way to do that is to uh, connect to beta flight or clean flight, and make sure that the on-screen drone is moving in the same way as your real-life drone. So if you're yawing left or right, that the on-screen drone is doing the same, and if you're rolling left or right or pitching forwards and backwards, that the on-screen drone is doing exactly the same. Uh, next thing you can check is, are the motors going in the correct direction? Uh, so your front left, and back uh, right should be going clockwise and your uh, front right and back left should be going counterclockwise. And finally, have you got the correct propellers in the correct place? Um, and so use the tips earlier on in the video to determine which are clockwise and which are counterclockwise and make sure that you have them 
in the correct positions on the drone. Happy flying!